I'm John Trainer, a professor of medicine and the chief of infectious diseases at the University of Rochester Medical Center. When bacteria grow in a colony together on, say, a foreign surface like a urinary catheter or a long-time indwelling IV line, they form these sort of very complex uh, colonies together and they really stop growing the way that they would normally be growing if they were out, you know, in a fresh environment. And under those circumstances, their metabolism changes, and some of those changes make it much more difficult for antibiotics to work. And that's why it's so much tougher to eradicate infections on things like artificial joints or indwelling catheters or urinary catheters, because those are environments where the bacteria can set up these sort of very different lifestyles than they have when they're just growing in a regular infection. Now, what these investigators are looking at is how does the metabolism of the bacteria change and how does that affect the ability of antibiotics to kill them? And what they were looking at here is a phenomenon where when the bacteria are growing on these surfaces, they don't import antibiotics inside the cell the way they normally would. And so certain antibiotics can't penetrate the cell and get in and do their thing. And specifically, they were looking at a class of antibiotics called aminoglycosides. And they found that under these conditions of growth, the aminoglycosides were not transported into the cell where they could do their job. But if they exposed the bacteria to certain types of sugars, this would turn on the transport process and transport the aminoglycosides into the cell where they could then kill the bacteria. Most antibiotics, in general, are designed to interfere with the metabolism of the bacteria and hit metabolic targets that the bacteria have that people don't have. So the concept is to try and find some enzyme or protein that only the bacteria has. So the antibiotic will kill the bacteria but won't be toxic to the person who's taking the antibiotic. One of the general principles of R is that in many cases when an infection is present on a foreign body, the only real way to cure the problem is to remove the foreign body. And sometimes that has to be done. Artificial valves have to be taken out or artificial joints have to be removed because of that problem that for a variety of reasons the bacteria are not w killed well by the antibiotics when they're living in these sort of colonies on a foreign surface. It's also hard for the host's own immune cells to get in there and kill the bacteria, so white cells and other things like that have trouble getting into the sort of buildup of goo that the bacteria make to cover themselves when they're sitting on an artificial body. And all of those things combined make treating these kinds of infections on foreign surfaces extremely difficult. Uh, one consequence is that typically they require very long courses of antibiotics, but sometimes even that isn't successful and the foreign body has to be removed. It's not easy to see exactly how this would be translated into actual treatment for humans, but it is in general, it's a principle. I mean, is there, are there things we can do to stimulate the bacteria to do what they need to do to be killed by, the, by antibiotics?